In this review I will take a look at the Intel i7 NUC. After unpacking the NUC it feels very small, much smaller than I actually thought it would be. On the top you will find a skull embedded, but you can switch the cover. A neutral cover is also included. When you open the NUC you won't find that much. You just have an two M2 slots for SSDs, uh, two DDR4 slots for your RAM, but you won't find any slot for instance for your SATA SSD. In our system we've got a 512GB Intel SSD as well as 16GB of DDR4 RAM, which will result in an overall price of almost 800 euros. The NUC offers a lot of modern connections. Luckily, all USB ports are already USB 3. There's also a USB Type-C port with Thunderbolt support, which means you can connect the monitor to it. There's also a mini display port and an HDMI port, which means you can connect up to three monitors parallel. There's also a headphone jack at the front and obviously the power connector at the back. The power supplying unit is almost as large as the NUC itself and it weighs a lot. The overall performance is what you would expect from a modern i7 computer, super fast. Along with the M2 SSD, which is in our case just a normal rather than a performance model, is absolutely great. You can expand the memory to up to 32GB and this will allow for even heavy tasks like video editing or 3D rendering. When the CPU is working, you will hear that the fan is turning very fast. However, in normal day-to-day -day usage, I never found it disturbing. Intel itself markets the NUC for gaming, which is a little bit misleading in my opinion. Sure, you've got an i7 and a fast SSD and also a lot of RAM, but it lacks one main component, the graphics card. You've got an Intel Iris Pro GPU integrated, which is a very fast graphic card for an integrated, but well, just for an integrated one. Compared to high-end graphic cards like the uh, NVIDIA GTX 1000 series, it's far behind. Still, if you're just doing standard HD or playing older games, it's not a big deal. But playing blockbuster titles, you will easily find yourself that you have to reduce the settings to even low and play at lower resolutions. There is a good option. You can use a Thunderbolt connection and connect an external graphics card in theory. Uh, I didn't test this so far, so I can't give an opinion here. So when it doesn't seem to be so great for gaming, where can this not really shine? Well, I think every task you can think of which requires a lot of CPU power. The good news is that this NUC doesn't need a lot of power. So you usually get along with 17 watts in idle and even under heavy load you usually have less than 50 watts, which is an excellent value. So I use it as an always on server and have multiple virtual machines running and it does the job just fine, everything is working very smooth here. And it won't put up your power cost too, too much. So if you are a hardcore gamer, this NUC is definitely not for you. But if you're looking for a high performance PC which you can mount behind your monitor or you're looking for a server which don't need that much power, it might be a perfect option. However, in this case I recommend to still consider the i3 or i5 uh, types which are much cheaper than the i7 but have less performance of course. So I hope that you enjoyed this review and of course if you got questions feel free to put it in the comments and hope to see you in the next review. Bye.